I'll change it on the web page. I want to say this afternoon, I nearly went mad chasing two minus signs. I thought I had asked to stretch. And then as I was copying over my notes, I found one minus sign. I found I had an overall minus sign wrong. <coughs> and there were two terms that were added together, so that meant each one had a minus sign there. And, uh, So I'm going to do the photon propagator today, um, the thing that Peskin and Schroeder skip. Um, Alright, I think we can all on start. Okay, so we can start it on. It's already running. All right, so the first thing is to do the photon spin, spin sums. Um, we're working in Coulomb gauge. And that condition is that del dot n is zero. And as a result, we can write a zero of x as 1 over 4 pi integral j0 of x and t, well, not x, y and t, d cubed y over x minus y. Okay. Notice the times are the same. So this is the instantaneous Coulomb interaction. Um, Somebody on Andromeda separates two charges, we feel it instantly. Obviously, that violates relative, special relativity and common sense. And um, so there's going to be, have to be something else that's very uh, non-relativistically invariant that compensates for that effect. Um, in any event, A0 is gone from the theory when we make this substitution. So we only have the three vector part of A. Moreover, we only have the transverse part of the three vector part of A. So we have, in effect, our polarization vectors E mu of P and S um, are such that E0 of P and S is just always zero. And we also have, in order for this condition to be true, we have the P dot E of P and S should vanish. And of course, we want these things to be normalized. So we have E dagger of P and S, E of P and S prime delta S S prime. Well, with this understanding, um, the choice for if P is in, oh, first of all, in as much as these are normalized, you won't be surprised that the E's depend only on the, on P hat. So E of Z hat plus or minus one, this is for a photon moving in the Z direction with 
right or left circular, polar, or circular polarization. It's 1 over root 2, 1 plus or minus i, 0. Or equivalently, 1 over root 2, x hat plus or minus i, y hat. Feel free to ask questions, and I'll try not to knock the camera down when I toss the chalk. Okay, um, more generally what we said was that E of P hat plus or minus 1 is R of P hat E of Z hat plus or minus 1 where R is some standard rotation that takes the z-axis into the p, the z-hat into p-hat. Okay. All right. Um, in fact, this would be e to the minus i phi or, uh, L3, e to the minus i theta L2, e of z-hat plus or minus 1. All right. Now, what we want to do is do a spin sum. We want to evaluate what EI of PS, EJ star of PS, sum S from minus 1 to 1 is not equal to 0 is. We want to know what that is. And clearly, if we computed this and did the two sums, we'd get it right eventually, but that would be a pretty complicated process. So let me show you a cute way of doing this. First of all, let's do this sum for the z hat direction. Then that is, and let's think of these things, let's use our matrix notation. This is actually the outer product of two vectors. This thing is a matrix, really. So this thing is E, let's do E z hat S, E dagger z hat S, summed over S. Well, that's these things here. And so the answer is the root twos occur twice, so we get a one half. So we get one half, one i zero times one minus i zero plus one half one minus i zero times one i zero. Okay. This is e plus, this is e minus, this is e plus dagger, this is e minus dagger. And we're multiplying them together. So we, this is the outer product. And so we get sum on s, e z hat s, um, E dagger Z hat S is one half times one minus I zero I one zero 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 plus one half one I zero minus I one zero 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 zero. And you add these together, what you get is one one zero. And I'm going to write that as the 3 by 3 identity matrix minus 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. But I'm going to write this in a different way. I'm going to say this is minus, that's a minus, minus E of Z hat. No, no, not E of Z hat, just Z hat minus z hat, z hat adjoint or transpose, whatever you want, okay? All right, now what's the general spin sum? Well, the general spin sum, which is this, is just the sum r of p hat. And, well, all right, let me, let me redo it in vector since I have the i's and j's explicit here. So what we're, we want to do is the sum over s minus 1 1 not equal to 0.
zero, E of P hat S, E dagger P hat S, and this is the sum R of P hat E Z hat S, um, E dagger Z hat S, R dagger P hat. But this of course is the same thing as R of P hat sum on S E Z hat S E dagger Z hat S R dagger P hat. But now we know what this is. This is just I minus Z hat Z hat dagger. So this is R of P hat. I minus Z hat, Z hat dagger, or transpose, R dagger, P hat. Well, R is, in this case, it's just an orthogonal transformation, and consequently dagger is transpose, but in any event it would be unitary or whatever. So R, R dagger is one, so this is just I, Minus, well, R of P hat, just take Z hat into P hat. So this is just P hat, P hat transpose. Now, if you translate that into notation with indices, we get minus PI, PJ over P vector squared. So that's, that's the derivation of the photon spin sum. So why are we calculating this spin sum? Ah, because we're going to do the photon propagator. This and remember when we did the fermion propagator. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Wow, that was a strike. I think that was the best one for the semester. Because I used my right hand. I think I'll have to use my right hand. Okay. So this is equivalent to those the U U bar and the yes. V bar calculation. Right, absolutely. Okay. For analysis, not for yeah. this, this lecture is going to be partly cloudy as you can see from that board. Um, as I say, I wish we shared this building with the Department of English. And then uh, we can clean boards. Um, okay. Any other questions? All right, well, let's look at what our a mu is. A mu of x is integral dqg 2 pi cubed root 2 either p0 or e sub p sum on s from minus 1 to 1 minus 0 e to the minus i px e mu of p and s a of p and s plus e to the i p x e mu star of p and s a dagger of p and s. Okay. You can see this thing is a, a permission field. And you can see that if you take, that first of all, a zero vanishes because the e zeros vanish. And del dot a is zero because a del dot a, di a divergence of this thing would pull down a uh, pi and an ei, and so we get p dot e, and that's zero. So, so we're in a Coulomb gauge, okay. and we know what the spin solution is. So now um, this is a star. I mean, I mean, this should be an epsilon, right? And then there's a this thing's a star. Oh Jesus! Yeah. Well, what am I doing? Did it, what did I use? I used e. So let's use e. Right, okay. And star. Yeah, that's a star. You want to look at the camera? No. All right. Okay. So remember what. 
the, the time when I did the original scale of propagator, I sort of went backwards, and um, I don't remember how I did the Fermi propagator, but let's do, let's do the photon propagator. Let's start with the thing that we're going to have to, that we encounter in a Feynman diagram calculation, or Fermi scattering amplitude. We're going to have a mean value in the vacuum, the time order product of a mu of x with a mu of y. So this is vacuum. Theta of x0 minus y0, a mu of x, a mu of y plus theta y0 minus x0, a mu y, a mu x vacuum. Now, um, we know that what we can, that in here, A plus is going to annihilate the vacuum, and A plus is going to annihilate the vacuum here, and so we can uh, replace that by uh, We know we have to have a nu minus of y, and for the same reason we need, we need to have a mu plus of x. It's the annihilation, in other words, this a is not equal to zero because it's the same thing as uh, a dagger vacuum hatching. Okay. So this is the structure that we have plus theta y zero minus x zero a nu plus y a u minus x. Okay. So that's our first step. And then I can't resist just turning this into a commutator because the other term in the commutator has both things in the wrong order. It has an A plus on the left, which annihilates the vacuum, and A minus on the right. No, an A plus on the right annihilates the vacuum, and A minus on the left. So we can replace this by this. But once we've done that, we know that for these free fields, since we have A of P and S, A dagger of Q and T equal delta S T, that's a T, delta Q, P minus Q, two pi cubed. Um, we know that the, this commutator is just going to be a complex number of some kind. And at that point, we can get rid of the vacuums. We can get rid of that. Get rid of this. So we just have these two terms. All right, are there any questions there? So now we want to compute the first term here. And this is fairly straightforward. Um, you get a u plus of x. A u minus y. Oh, this is going to be an integral dqp. Q to pi to the sixth, square root of 2EP, 2EQ, sum on ST from minus 1 to 1, skipping 0, the commutator of A of P and S with a value of Q and T, and then E to the minus I PX plus I QY. And then e mu p s e mu q t star. Okay, so that's what it is. This gives two pi times this delta, the chronic delta times a delta p minus q. Um, that gives us integral, in other words, d q p d q q two pi six root 2e, 2e, pq, and we get 2 pi q, 
delta as t delta q p minus q e to the minus i p a plus i q y e mu p s e mu q p star. And the delta functions, which are our best friends, we, uh, we wind up with this nice relativistically invariant structure times the sum e mu of p s e mu star of p s and just e to the minus i p x minus y. Now, of course, this vanishes when either mu or nu is zero. Otherwise, it's this spin sum. And um, so this, and this, so I don't, I don't know of a neat way of doing this, but what we're going to have then is ai plus of x, aj minus of y then is going to be this dqp, 2 pi q, 2ep or 2p0. And this is going to be delta ij minus pi pj over p squared. Notice I'm using upper indices so that everything has a plus sign. We don't have to screw around with the metrics. And this is e to the minus i dx minus 1. This is supposed to be 4 vector on the All right. Similarly, a j plus of y with a i minus of x, which is the other term here. In other words, with mu equal to i and nu equal to j. This, it turns out, is simply the same thing. Two e p and delta ij minus pi j over p vector squared. Um, and it's just e to the i p x minus 1. So it's just this sign that changes. OK, any questions? Very good time to ask questions. And any time is a very good time to ask, ask questions. But this is especially good because um, I have to erase this. Some of these two things. So it's a theta function of time, which is sort of a common sense theta function of time, really. It says if x is less than greater than y, if x is later than y, then we do it this way, otherwise we do it that way. And one of these two terms, well, these two terms are really just integrals over mass shell, on mass shell free particles. Um, in other words, dqp and p0 is equal to ep. Up p we have a p0. It's, e, it's, it's ep. It's square, well, and for the photon, it's just the length of the three vector p. For a more general, for massive particles, square root of n squared plus p squared. But this is a, an on mass shell stru uh, structure here. 
And the same thing with this. So in fact, what you actually have in this line in the propagator is everything's actually on the mass shell, and the, you just have three particles propagating from x to y, or y from x to y in this case, from y to x in this case. Um, the trouble is, if we keep things like this, then we've got um, we've got two separate terms, and uh, the two separate terms have a different phase. Okay? Also, if we're in Coulomb gauge, we've got this rather complicated structure here, which is made even worse by the fact that if we use four-dimensional notation, we have to say certain of them. If mu and nu is zero, the whole thing is zero. All right. So, so uh, of course, what Feynman did was to rewrite the theta functions of time that occur in the time order product to write them as integrals over a another variable, another energy variable, q zero. And then when you write things in terms of that, you have a four-dimensional four integral over uh, momentum. And then you have what everybody calls virtual particles, because the Q is now off mass shell. It's all possible four vectors. But really, those off mass shell particles, they really aren't any off mass shell particles. It's just a way of incorporating all the mathematics into a neater formula. So there's um, I wonder. Well, is that what we're about to do now? Yeah. Okay. So I just wanted to demystify it before I mystify it. <laughs> okay. Well, first thing is to write the theta function of a as one over two pi i integral to the is a over s minus i epsilon dx. Okay. All right. So this it, is a pole here at i epsilon. So if a is greater than 0 and s has a positive imaginary part, so it's way up here, then this is a damped exponential because you have two i. So you add what I call a ghost contour going around like that. And this just gives you 1 for A positive. On the other hand, if A is negative, then you can add a ghost contour this way, but then you get 0. Okay. So this, in fact, is a representation of, of the heavy side function. Okay. Um, now let's look at what this uh, heavy side, what, what this heavy side function will, implies here. We've got a theta of x zero minus y zero, so that's just going to be one over two pi i integral p s e to the minus. I'm sorry, e to the i s x0 minus y0 over s minus i epsilon. But that multiplies this thing here, which has e to the minus i p0 x0 minus y0. So minus i p0 x0 minus y0. I'm just going to look at this part and do it, and then we'll do the rest of it. And these notes will be online sometime tonight, maybe this afternoon. All right, so I'm going to set Q0, so this is the magic step. Q0 is P0 minus S, and this will take us from an on mass shell energy to something in Hollywood. OK. Can I ask why we didn't have to do this for the other propagators? We did. Um, I just didn't. Okay. I just didn't. I didn't demystify it. I just went along with the mystification. Um, in fact, I haven't seen the damn thing ever demystified. I only wound up 
seeing how to mystify it when I was doing the neutrino oscillation uh, computation where, um, where I did separate the things in space time and, and then realized what was going on. Anyway, that's what led me to the instructions. Okay, so now we're setting Q0 to P0 minus S and um, so we're going to replace S by P0 minus Q0. That means uh, dS goes to minus dQ0. But on the other hand, we also have to switch the limits. And so there's no overall minus sign. That was one of my minus sign mistakes. Barrett's advantage. So this is equal to plus integral dQ0 over 2 pi i. P0 minus Q0 minus I epsilon E minus I Q0 over 0 minus 1. And P0 is still on mass shell, so this is the thing we call EP. So there were two minus signs here? Yes. There was a minus sign. So you went from the ds. There was a minus sign to the ds, and the you know, minus sign when you interchange the limits from. So the limits are now the opposite of what they were. No, no, no. Now they're the, they they became the opposite. But then no, like it was a minus it. sign to flip the mole. It. Yeah. It's you. You can imagine a simpler case. Let me just. Do well, it. I can see it from doing that. Substitutions of the limit in the top equation there, and the substitution yeah. the top. All right. Does anybody want to see it explicitly? Right. Okay. So what we have then is theta of x zero minus y zero times a i plus of x a j minus y minus one over i. Yeah. The minus is because, because um, well, it's this minus line. Um, integral d fourth q, we have then a 2 pi to the fourth, a 2e, I'm calling it, oh, the other thing is that since we've now made this the Hollywood energy, um, we over here might as well, 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 this is a dummy variable, this e, this p, we're going to switch then from p to q. So it all looks like this. And then this is going to be delta rj minus qi qj over q vector squared e to the minus i q x minus y. And now we have here q0 minus e q plus i x y. By the way, the way to the, if you want to see this sign change, Really, well, let me just do this for you guys, just in case there's somebody too shy to ask. Because suppose we just set Q equal to minus S. Then this is going to be minus dQ, but now when S is 1, Q is minus 1, and when S is 2, this is minus 2. Now we use the minus sign to change the limits, and we go from minus, one, from minus 2 to minus 1, which is moving straight. The right hand side is obviously 1, and this left hand side is 1, so we've got everything straight. Okay. Can you already see what I write here? Theta of minus a. This is minus an integral ds over 2 pi i. E to the is a over S plus I epsilon. And now, in order to see why, we see we made a pole
integral of minus i epsilon. When a is negative, we can have a ghost contour like this. And then we get, we get, we have a clockwise contour. And a clockwise contour gives us minus, a minus sign which cancels this minus. All right. So now um, this theta function times, we now have an i p0 x0 minus y0. And we have this minus sign. So the structure here is minus integral ps over 2 pi i. E p i p0 x0 minus y0 plus i s x0 minus y0. By the way, I'm basically following Weinberg here. Weinberg is some part of chapter 8. Um, by Pest and Schroeder standards, uh, this is a rigorous derivation, a super rigorous, an unnecessarily rigorous derivation. <coughs> but um, by Weinberg standards, it's a little more than hand waving. So. I think it's a lot more than hand waving. Anyways. Okay. So this is equal to then minus integral e q zero over two pi i e to the minus i q zero x zero minus y zero over minus p zero minus q zero plus i epsilon. And of course, what I've done here was set minus q0 equal to p0 plus s. So s is equal to minus q0 minus p0. So we have p0 plus s up here turned into minus i q0. OK, that means, we all said, that means that Theta of y0 minus x0 times a j plus of y a i minus of x is minus 1 over i integral to fourth q. Again, we'll replace p, three vector p by three vector q. Two pi to the fourth. 2eq delta ij minus qi qj over q vector squared. That's q. E to the minus i q0 x0 minus y0 minus i q vector dot x minus y. So I'm Remember this, what I'm doing is I'm taking, I'm re replacing 3 vector p by 3 vector q, and the p0 part has been absorbed in the q0 and the s and the q0. Okay, so this is what we have. Now, so 
if we had not said minus q0 equal to that thing, I mean, wouldn't we have got a plus sign there? And then we could have had uh, some Minkowski interproduct of yes, the next minus Yes, yes, yes. True enough. But, obviously we don't want to do that. No. <laughs> the reason is that you see over here, we have a minus. And we want both of them to be minus. So that's what it is. One more short. But what we can do now is we can uh, replace 3 vector q by minus 3 vector q. And everywhere in the integral. But it doesn't matter here. It doesn't matter here because it's even. It's even there. So, talk. And then what we've done is simply um, well, effectively what we have then is let me just say we then just get minus i q x minus y. So now everything. Oh wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! I left something out. The I left out the denominator. And the denominator, sorry about that, the denominator is minus E0, not E0, EQ minus Q0 plus I epsilon. Sorry about that. Okay, so now we add the two terms. Vacuum, time order product, and the I of X, the J of Y. Is minus one over i two fourth q two pi to the fourth one over two e q delta i j minus two i q j. You see why I need to spin some vector squared times. And now I've already gotten this to a common factor of e to the minus i q x minus y. So let me maybe put that here. It should belong to e to the minus i q x minus y. And now what we've got is one term, which is 1 over q0 minus e q plus i epsilon plus 1 over minus e q minus q zero plus i one. Okay, let me just check my notes to make sure it is. Okay, everything's okay. Alright, now we come to the most difficult part here, the high school algebra where we have to add these two terms mm -hmm. together and not screw up. So let me, so you guys can think about what, I've, what we've done so far, and I'll brace this board here. add these two terms together, what we get is 1 over q0 minus eq plus i epsilon plus 1 over minus q0 minus eq plus i epsilon. And this is minus e0 minus, minus eq minus q0 plus i, well, the i epsilon is really pretty irrelevant in the numerator plus q0 minus eq, well, plus i epsilon, if you really keep it. And the denominator we get minus q0 squared plus eq squared plus i epsilon times, after cancel it, well, no, actually we can exactly get this. So this is the expression. 
Now in the numerator, obviously the Q0s cancel, and we get minus 2EQ in the numerator, and the denominator, this thing is 3 vector Q squared. This is minus Q0 squared. So this is in Peskin's metric minus Q squared. This is minus 2EQ by epsilon. But now epsilon is an infinitesimal positive quantity, and Q, EQ is certainly positive. So 2EQ epsilon can be replaced by epsilon because it's just some positive quantity that we're going to let go to zero. OK. So what we get here then, canceling the minus signs, is 2EQ over Q squared plus I epsilon. What did you do with the I epsilon on top? Yeah. Well, if you oh, combine yeah, you're, you're, right, you're going to set the other terms. Yeah, right. everything else is finite, so it yeah, doesn't yeah. matter. The, the I epsilon are only important in the non -air. Okay, um, let me get you some piece of and Okay. So now this structure here, let me let me use the magic of an eraser to replace this square bracket by what we've got, which is 2EQ divided by Q squared plus I epsilon. Well, that's quite nice because the 2EQs cancel. And for that matter, minus 1 over I, we might as well just write as an I. Okay, so that's our expression. So it's a lot better than it was. Um, although, as I said to you earlier, this d fourth Q and the virtual particle is kind of a it's a Hollywood representation of what's going on, but it has a certain um, nice form, but still it's, it's got this Coulomb gauge structure in it and also we've got this um, we've got to say that if either if we had mu and nu here then if either mu or nu is zero the thing is automatically zero. So the question is how to um, what the next step is and um, the next step is what Weinberg calls seemingly perverse. <laughs> it's it's just, um, uh, certainly true. We're going to introduce a time-like vector E, which is 1, 0, 0, 0. So this is time-like, okay? So E0 is 1, and the EIs are 0. So E is the opposite of, of A vector. All right. Now, I'm going to write this structure down. Minus eta mu nu, where eta is this flat space plus, now you see why Weinberg called it seemingly perverse. He used n for e, but then you get n and eta look almost the same, so I switched it. this thing, this spin sum, by that. But this has one advantage, because this is a general expression for arbitrary mu and nu, whereas this is only right for the space-space components of this time of product. All right, the point is that as you can check, and 
I'll just say you can check in the privacy of your own notes or something that this vanishes. So this is zero if mu equals zero or mu equals zero or mu and nu are zero. Okay. So if any of those is zero, if either mu or nu is zero, bang, this whole thing is zero. Um, moreover, this expression, if we write it, if mu and nu are both space components, then we have minus eta ij plus q0 qi, well, ej, ej is zero, so that one is zero, that one is zero, so this is minus qi qj. And that last term is zero, the denominator is q vector squared. But in the Peskin metric, a to ij is negative. By the way, previously when I said if you use upper indices, you, get a, you, you don't have to worry about the metric. Well, that's true for vectors. But for tensors, it's not true because a to the lower ij is negative with Peskin. And when you raise it, you get two minus signs, so it stays negative. So this thing is minus, minus delta ij. This is delta ij minus qi qj over q vector So that's what this thing is equal to. So it's equal to 0 or delta ij minus qi qj over q vector squared if mu equals i, mu equals j. Plus it's All right. So this means that we can do the seemingly perverse thing of replacing this spin sum part with something that um, is uh, pretty bizarre, but it allows us to write this as mu and nu. So I, I think I'll just, instead of rewriting the formula, I'll just use the magic of the eraser. All right. So we're going to let i and j go to mu nu. And now, instead of this, what we're going to have is minus a to mu nu plus Q0, Q mu, E mu, plus Q0, Q nu, E mu, minus Q mu, Q nu, minus Q squared, I'm running out of space here. Well, here, I'm going to rewrite this exponential. minus q squared e mu e nu and this is all over q vector squared. Alright, so this is our formula for the propagator. And let me get so this is our new formula for the propagator. Okay. Now here comes the big surprise. The big surprise is that where do we expect this propagator to occur? Well, in Feynman diagrams, what you're going to have is the interaction Hamiltonian is going to be of the form E J mu A mu integrated E for that. So that's going to be the, the uh, interaction Hamiltonian. And so, well, let's see. So, in other words, A mu is always going to be multiplied by a conserved current. So, in other words, 
this a mu is going to occur with a j mu of x, and this is going to occur with a j mu of y. Right. So let's look at what, what that means. That means that we would have something like this. d fourth q, d fourth x, e to the minus i q, x minus y. I'm just going to look at part of it. Look at, let's look at a q mu, j mu of x term. Okay. If you look at your Weinberger's chapter, I something else. Oh, I don't know where it is. Okay. This thing we can write as essentially I I d mu, well d upper mu, I guess. D mu e to the minus i q x minus y. J mu of x, all right? Hello, sportsmen, right? Okay, now we integrate by parts, and we get integral d fourth q, d fourth x, minus i, e to the minus i q, x minus y, d mu, j mu of x. But if the current is conserved, this is zero. So all the q nu terms actually are going to cancel in Feynman diagrams. The q nu terms also, because there will be a nu, j nu, q nu terms will vanish. And so this one is also zero. So all these three terms with the super ugly terms vanish. What's left is the weird term, the e nu, e nu. And remember, e nu only had, e nu is delta mu zero. So what's left in this uh, structure here, when we multiply by j mu and j nu, is a term, well, let me erase this. Do I owe anybody a chocolate? Right. So let's just look at this propagated here. Let's just focus on this term in this integral. All right. So it's minus d4 q over 2 pi 4. Uh, what is the term? It's minus q squared e mu e nu, but I'm looking at the zero, zero part. Okay, so maybe I should, let me, um, well, it's, it's hard for me to say this because if I, well, all right, let me, Right, let, let, let's go back and, and, and let, let me go back to this and say one more time. Suppose mu and nu are both space, space indices. In that case, the weird term vanishes. These guys all are gone because of the current's conserved. And all we have is this term, which is fine. So for the space case, that's, that's fine. Um, for the space-time case, well, once again, uh, this term vanishes. All these terms go because of conserved current. And well, we just get zero because this is zero. So we just get zero for space time. The other case is the time time case. Okay. So the time time case, I'll re redraw this. Zero t a zero x a zero y zero. What is it going to be? Well, over there it's going to be integral d fourth q over two pi to the four. Don't we already know this is zero from this line up here? We know that whole thing in parentheses is zero. 
for time time. Yes. That's good. You're right. Absolutely. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take zero and split it up into something I want to keep and something I want to I want to segregate it away. So um, this is segregation. Jim Crow. All right. Okay. So the first term then is minus eta zero zero. And then the next term, the only term that's left is minus q squared times i over q squared plus i epsilon. 1 over q vector squared e to the minus i q x minus y. All right? All right. Now I'm going to be focusing on the second term. Um, and I just brought this along because I wanted to have something equal to something rather than just be looking at a term. Okay. Well, you notice that this cancels this. This is just q squared over q squared. So this is just equal to minus i like that. Now this is 1 over q squared. And the only q0 occurs up here. That gives us a delta function in time. So in fact, let me just look at the second term then. So this is equal to then integral p fourth q minus eta zero zero to pi to the fourth. That's that term. 